come to this special tribute as we give God thanks for the legacy of faithful leadership that we have enjoyed over the past 35 years in the life of our denomination. There are five specially called and gifted persons who provided leadership over this 35-year period. These faithful five are Adele Fires, Kenneth Teagarden, John Humbert, William Nichols, and Richard Hamm. Each one has led us through periods of transformation that has empowered and strengthened us for the future. President of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. Dr. Nichols served for two years from 1991 to 1993. Dr. Nichols' home congregation was in Baxter Springs, Kansas. He served pastorates in Oklahoma, Kansas, and Illinois. He was unexpectedly called into the position of general minister and president, at which time Dr. Nichols faithfully responded to God's calling and stepped into leadership in the midst of turmoil in the church. His comforting presence was a source of healing for our disciple family. Dr. Nichols' gifts of storytelling and articulation of faith helped us recenter on a spiritual focus. He has authored seven published books, the latest of which is Day by Day through the Psalms. He and his wife Claudine have two children, David and Claudia. I gave the uh, CYF lesson one Sunday evening and I gave a review of the book Burma Surgeon by Gordon Seagrave who was a medical missionary. And it was a wonderful book. I was enthralled by it. And uh, it had been a selection of the Book of the Month Club, which, to which I belonged when I was in the seventh and eighth, ninth grade. And I liked that book so much, and I gave a review, an enthusiastic review for our CYF program. And our pastor, E.M. Wheatley, happened to be there. And uh, after the program, he came up to me and said, have you ever thought of being a minister? And I said, truthfully, no, I never had given that a thought. And he said, well, think about it. Well, after that, I could think of little else. And that summer, I went to CYF conference. And in those days, there was a dedication or consecration service on Friday evening. An opportunity was given for people to come forward if they wanted to dedicate their lives to what was then called full-time Christian service or a full-time church vocation. And when that call was issued, I found myself going forward, and there were six others. And I kept in touch with those six others. All seven of us managed to get throughout my ministry. I've always had Bible study classes and other classes going on, church history. I've always had something that I was teaching and still do. I'm teaching a Bible study class even now. And then several years ago, I discovered that my teaching ministry could be continued and expanded through the written word. And so I started writing, and to this point have had uh, seven books published. My latest one just last week, day by day through the Psalms. In addition to local pastorates, you had other opportunities in ministry in the general level, too. Yes, uh, early on I discovered that the church was not just something that happened on the local level, that the church is something that uh, uh, happens on other levels as well. And uh, my first experience with that was in, in Oklahoma where I served as uh, on the general board, on the regional board, and also as a regional youth uh, counselor. And uh, then in Kansas, I served as president of the Kansas Christian Churches. They now call that position moderator of the region of Kansas. And then by the time I came to uh, Kansas City, I was serving in some general offices. I've served on the boards of um, four of our general units, two of our seminaries, two of our other institutions of higher education, and uh, in various capacities I've been called upon several times to write curriculum materials for Christian Women's Fellowship, for a men's fellowship, and for some church school and various other things. You are our fourth General Minister and President of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ in the United States and Canada. Share with us some of your highlights of your ministry. I'm sure you remember, and most people will re also remember, the very painful ordeal that we went through when a, a brilliant, uh, deeply dedicated candidate uh, was defeated for reasons that I think were unworthy of, of the church. 
And actually, he received more than half the vote. He just didn't receive the requisite two-thirds majority. And it was such a shock to the convention, the assembly, in Tulsa, and nobody knew exactly what was going to happen. And it was a time of great confusion, a time of terrible doubt and fear about the future of the church. I don't have the gifts that the man who was nominated had. But I do love the church, and I felt a strong call to try to be a healer in a difficult situation. And that was my intention. And when Jesus Christ is exalted in the church, then we can maintain these little differences uh, without losing track of our unity that we have in Christ. We do not have unity in ourselves. We have unity in Christ. And that's what the church needs to know and remember. Bill, what are your hopes and your prayers for the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ? Oh, I have one hope and prayer that uh, is more than any other. I hope and pray that we can recover a strong sense of conviction. Um, you know, there is a scripture, I believe it's in the 26th chapter of Proverbs that says in the King James Version, where there is no vision, the people perish. And I would say that if the church can't recover its sense of vision, then the church will perish. Interestingly enough, the New Revised Standard Version has an entirely different translation of that. It says, where there is no prophecy, the people cast off all restraint, mm -hmm. which means if they don't have the Word of God to motivate them, then they don't feel any disciplines. Our discipline comes from our sense of commitment, our sense of conviction. I wish our people were better Bible scholars. Throughout most of our history, we thought of ourselves as a people of the book. We're no longer a people of the book. Are there any other words of wisdom and encouragement that you would like to share with our pastors and or our congregations? I hope we can recover a sense of the call. Every one of us has received a call. That's what vocation means, of course, a calling. But uh, we sometimes forget that uh, every one of us has been brought to the kingdom through a special invitation that God gives us through Jesus Christ. And the Apostle Paul in the first chapter of 1 Corinthians says, consider your call, my brothers and sisters. And then he goes on to say, maybe you weren't rich, maybe you weren't wise, maybe you weren't of good report, maybe all these things, but still God called you. And every member of the church, every minister of the church needs to understand that. That's what has made us special people as a church, as ministers, that God has called us. And uh, that ought to be the parenthesis around our ministry as members as well as as clergy, to remember that we do what we do in response to God's loving invitation through Jesus Christ to come and be the church. Thank you.